the first thing I want to cover is the fact that um, stress is just such a, a, a large portion of our vocabulary. We we hear people talk about it a lot. Oh, I'm so stressed. This is so stressful. I, I don't like this. And, um, you know, you may be one of those folks that talks about how stressful things are or how stressed out you are. Um, and so because we are masters of language here and using language to create our reality, we really want to be conscious about the meanings behind the language that we're using and be careful and conscious of the words that we're using because they're creating an experience. They're, they're, they're creating your reality here. So this is the last time in a programming moment, meaning using our language intentionally to program a experience, program a reality. The last time you ever want to just use the word stress and, and use it loosely because it, it has um, two different meanings and there's a half full aspect of stress and there's a half empty aspect of stress just like everything here um, it always comes in two forms so if we're talking about the half full or you stress which is latin for good or, or beneficial stress um, examples of this are you know working out in the gym you're putting your muscles under intense stress and Really, it's not the you know first nine reps out of ten that are where, where you're you know getting the muscle growth. It's on that final rep where you're you're tearing muscle fibers. You're there's violent cellular death that's happening. So putting our muscles, for example, under stress is very beneficial. We like that. We we want that stress. That's that's you stress. Now distress, which is the form of stress that most people use and most people think about when they use that word um, bad or you know um, non-beneficial stress um, you know th these are things like if you push it too hard in the gym and you tear your bicep muscle this is the stress that we don't want so it always comes into two forms and you really want to be conscious about how you're thinking about it. it it's not even that you have to go around you know using the word you stress or distress that'll certainly help you it'll certainly prime you and program you to think of which form of the stress you're talking about but in your you know journaling in your processing of the stressful events of life you know is this half full or half empty some other examples that we've talked about and used is you know the broken leg limper tool you break your leg the body heals it back and as long as you do the rehab the body is working to overbuild to make it stronger to to grow you know so we we grow from stress we 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 need it it's it's a necessary component so beginning to think differently about this and really understanding which one it is and consciously turning stress into you stress in moments that it that it makes sense that's that's our first step of this whole content chunk in using language as our friend using it to our advantage that begins this transformation process of turning stress into the adrenaline of greatness now I always love to cover, um, you know, what, where does this come from? We always like to look at things as strategies, you know, patterns, um, looking at even how does this originate in family of origin programming. And uh, so this is a inevitable you favorite. All of you here have heard this before. When 90% of parents begin their success commands with um, for the child that's going to go pour their first glass of milk they tell them hey little brian you know don't don't spill the milk there 
what happens is the brain has to cognitively process that command by imagining ways to spill milk to then avoid doing it. So counterintuitively, in using this command, don't spill the milk, which think about it, is focused on avoiding pain or worrying or stressing, you know, putting anxiety in your mind, in your body, that actually enhances the probability that it's going to happen because in the mind body connection if you're if that's your visualization oh i could knock the glass over or i could it could overflow i could trip and fall and if you're an overachiever and here's where it gets really interesting you don't think of 200 ways you think uh, you don't think of 50 ways you think of 200 plus ways like hey you know what meteor can come through the ceiling right now rip your picture my hands now now i gotta now i gotta worry about meteors and so it becomes a very tormented psychology software to be in because you're worrying about potential meteors that can come out of the sky and as you get older you know now you're going into business meeting you're thinking oh don't say that oh oh that's a really uh, don't you know don't say don't talk about that or don't do this to get fired i got to worry about all the things that i could say and do that are going to get me in trouble they're going to, you know, quote unquote, spill the milk here. And do you think as you get older, because you've never been hit by a meteor, do you just all of a sudden one day, hey, you know what? I haven't you know, spent 30, 40, 50 years. I haven't been hit by a meteor. Why, bo why, why, why bother with that? I should, I'm just going to stop worrying about meteors. Or is it because and do you record that the more you worry is the reason that it's never happened you know and because you've never been hit the probability is increasing that it's going to happen so i got to continue i got to stick with this pat i got to stick with this strategy of worrying because guess what it's it's worked for me it's kept me out of pain yeah this is how these things get reinforced and they get wired in even more intensely over time and how these stress and anxiety patterns, you know, perpetuate for you. Now, I, I want I want you to ponder this and ponder, really think about this as a strategy. And, and let's make this real. So sticking with our four year old kid. Um, and the messages that we're giving them, how how the programming occurs, because this don't spill the milk metaphor and tool is is really about conscious commands, conscious programming commands that we use, where they originate. So if you were to teach a child a great strategy for handling a future event that is very important to them, would you ever say, you know, dear child, what you need to do is put a lot of stress and anxiety and worry into your body and imagine all the possible worst outcomes and plan for, you know, all of them and put your contingencies in place and hope that they don't occur or, or do something along those lines. And whatever you do, just don't get excited. You know, don't think about the, 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 the success place that you do want, the, you know, towards pattern place that the the vision that you want to create just don't get excited because you know of, of how exciting it might turn out because that's only going to lead to disappointment would you ever tell a young excited you know toddler child would you ever give them that message would you ever give them that strategy it doesn't really make much sense when you hear it like that does it so you know why do so many do it this way well again because it's you know it's been programmed it's it's worked and or they believe that it's worked for so long to protect them from getting hit by meteors and most most are unconscious to the fact that you know that's how they're that's really what they're telling themselves. 
you know, so when I frame it this way, it doesn't make it, it doesn't make sense. It, it sounds silly, but, but people who continue to wrestle with stress or anxiety or, you know, worry and they, they, this is this is the message that they continue to give themselves by using that strategy. Now, when he or she, the child, asks in response, so let me get this straight. When we put these fears and we put these concerns in our body for the possible disappointing outcome, how often does the worst actually happen? And then you say, Oh, no, that's the great thing. That's the beauty of the strategy. It's because we do this is how we avoid our disappointment. Mm -hmm. Because we worry is why the worst rarely ever happens. Really? Really? Again, it sounds silly when it's framed this way. But this is a pattern and this is a belief, an unconscious belief that many people continue to run, continue to tell themselves. So what does this really mean for you today? You know, you're, you might be sitting there pondering, thinking, okay, yeah, this is making sense, I get it, but uh, what am I supposed to do with this? I, well, if you remember to, I've covered a, a, a slide in, in some of the introduction material around NLP and, and really what is it? And I talk a lot about habitual sentences, NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, one of the primary tool sets we use here, really, really being about habitual sentences that we use, right? The sentences are revealing the software and by repeating them in, over and over again, they remain true. That's That's us you know, continuing to program a reality, perpetuate a reality. And one of the most important things, important points that I make here is that there's really only one surefire way to change a belief and change how you, you know, really operate and, you know, change your belief in this, in this context around stress and worry and the, the, validity of that strategy you have to put your feeling or put the feeling in your body that you would have when and if that belief is true and then voila instantly the belief changes so you know instead of stress and worry which most of us are very familiar with it's hope and excitement and um you know so one of the examples is if you know the feeling of i'll give i'll, I'll reference another tool here the 800 foot cliff versus the eight foot step ladder the woman on the 800 foot cliff about to make the release maneuver we freeze frame her we look at her adrenal and cortisol levels all of the neurotransmitters and and hormones and chemicals that are associated with fear or anxiety is really this you know the adrenal the the adrenaline you know markers the neurotransmitter markers in the body they're through the roof in that moment that that woman's never been more alive. Now, completely different scenario, a man on an eight foot step ladder who's never, or who's, who's deathly afraid of heights, reaching over to put the final ornament on the Christmas tree, we freeze frame him, we look at his same neurotransmitter chemical levels, adrenal, cortisol, all of that, same markers of fear, anxiety, they're the same, they're through the roof. Now, it's the meaning that they associate to those chemicals, that feeling, that experience. The woman has never been more alive. The man on the eight foot step ladder, deathly afraid of heights, never been closer to death. So 
you have the ability to change the meaning and think differently about what these feelings you're experiencing are. And so instead of anxiety and you know fear, can you put hope? Can you put confidence? Can you put you know excitement? I've never, you know, never been more alive. I love this, this fear that I'm experiencing. I this is amazing. And I'm even senses are even more heightened and I'm operating at a higher capacity. And so for those who struggle with this, say or think, or you're like, yeah, okay, I get it. But still, I mean, how do I, am I supposed to control how I feel? I, I don't know if I really buy that. I don't know if we can control how we feel, or I don't know how to do that. Well, how often do you put anxiety in your worry and worry in your body already? Yeah, most of us, we're already doing this unconsciously. You know, so until you would uh, try a new tool, you, until you try to reframe an, uh, a, you know, an emotion, a feeling in the body, <clears throat> you can't just say, oh, I don't know, this, is, this seems too hard. Don't know. I don't think we have the ability to do that. No, you're already doing it. And, you know, even when the likelihood, we, we do this, we put anxiety, even when the likelihood is remote that the fear will actually come true so you know how it's just doing it a little differently how to put future emotions in the body it's time for you to use this to your advantage you know be conscious about the don't spill versus pour carefully you know and and put that vision of success you know, the towards pattern of what you want versus what you don't want and what could go wrong. You know, put the future greatness into your body and just just watch what happens. Watch and see what it does to your stress and anxiety and worry levels. When you change the focus, when you reframe an experience, you're going to be amazed at your abilities to really change this for you. So that's the intro into our series of content here on transforming stress into the adrenaline of greatness for you.